Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. More watches, more secrets. I think we all have watches with secrets, whether they be obvious or hidden. And learning about these secrets is just part of the fun of watch collecting. This is part three of my watches with secrets videos. And as usual, some of the secrets are subtle, some are in plain sight, and some are mysterious. Let's look at some more. Ratto is an interesting brand. It may seem like the brand doesn't quite know what to do with itself. For example, is it a fashion brand, a value brand, a general purpose brand? But for the last couple of decades or more, it's been a leader in cases, especially alternative cases such as ceramic. The brand was the first to introduce a ceramic case and bracelet that's scratch proof. It was called the Diastar. Now part of the Swatch Group, Rado was established in 1917 in Switzerland as Schlupp & Company, which initially focused on producing watch movements during the first couple of decades of their operation. By the end of World War II, the factory was among the largest producers of watch movements in the world. In 1957, the company offered its first entirely in-house watch collection called the Rado Collection. The iconic Golden Horse Collection also made its debut in 1957, with the Green Horse Collection following in 1958. The Green Horse model was one of the first rattle models marketed for its water resistance. There are green, silver, gold, purple, and sapphire horses, which are just different model lines and are not necessarily indicative of the quality of the model. Each has a different design. The Golden Horse line is thought to be more elegant and the Green Horse more sporty, with the Purple Horse being the entry-level version of the line. By the way, it's commonly understood that the model name Seahorse is inspired from the fact that the horse is a sign of good luck in Asian countries. The sea S-E-A, supposedly indicates that the watch is water resistance, hence a water resistance watch with, which brings good luck. Maybe. With regards to secrets, my Rado Silver Horse from 1968 may qualify for a twofer, maybe a threefer, or even a fourfer, if there is such a thing. The first secret is right out there in the open. That is, that the cyclops on the acrylic crystal is inverted. That is, the bubble is on the underside of the crystal rather than on the outside. The cyclops aids in reading the date, but very few watches have taken this approach. The Silver Horse model was originally available with a black, blue, or this white dial, but not all of them have the inverted cyclops, as I call it. The second secret is on the back of the watch and refers to the case. Sure, a cool twin seahorse emblem is on the case back, but the secret isn't obvious. SLR camera owners will be familiar with the concept, however. The case back is a bayonet design where a 30 degree twist will remove it. There are even direction hours on the case. Most watches have either a screw-down case back or a press-fit case back. Secret number three is also not obvious, at least not from looking at the watch. It has to do with the movement. This particular Rado Silver Horse has an automatic movement that can also be manually wound, a relatively uncommon feature for a mid-20th century design. And, it should be noted, that the movements in these Rado horses are excellent. At the time, Rado was an in-house subsidiary of Schlupp and Company, an Eboche manufacturer, and bought raw Eboches and parts and did the finishing, mounting, and adjusting in-house. I've saved the coolest secret for last. At 12 o'clock, is Rado's ornamental red anchor logo, 
which looks great against the white dial. But it moves. Turn the watch and the anchor rotates. According to the patent filed by Ratto in the 1950s, the rotatable anchor logo is not just a gimmick, but rather serves as a service indicator for the movement. When the oil in the moving anchor local's bearing is depleted and the anchor no longer rotates freely, it indicates that the movement lubrication is exhausted and the watch needs a service. You don't see that every day. Even some current rattle models have the rotating anchor, but I'm not sure if, if it's still mechanically tied to the movement to indicate lubrication status. Here's what appears to be a simple digital watch, something that may have been made in the 1980s. Like most digital LCD watches of that era, it shows both the date and the time in the display. The month, day, and year at the top. It's got the time on the bottom. But there are two interesting buttons below the display labeled Time and Message, which should provide a clue. So the first secret of the Seiko Receptor is that it's a dual time watch. Press the time button and a second time zone is displayed. And you see the word dual. Release the button and the original date and time are shown. But the really cool secret is related to that second button labeled message. This watch was actually introduced in the early 1990s before smartphones, Apple Watches, and the like. It was during the age of pagers, those cigarette pack-sized, cheap and ubiquitous devices that received and displayed codes and messages via a wireless network. So what would happen if you combined a pager and a watch? The Seiko Receptor message watch would happen. That's what. Introduced in the Portland and Seattle areas in the early 1990s, and soon thereafter in other cities, this innovative receive-only device could display a message on its eight-character, two-line display. These messages may have been a little bit challenging to fit into that small space, although those of you who use Twitter can probably relate. Unlike pagers, which had to be turned on to be used, the receptor message watch was always on. To send a message, you would call a certain phone number and enter your message via the telephone, and it would be sent. A small icon on the, on the dial indicated an incoming message, whereupon you'd press the message button to see it. If you look at the strap, you see these little metal slots. Those are actually the antenna for the watch which picked up an FM signal subcarrier. Seiko discontinued the system by 1999, which used a local FM network that had to be installed in each city. This Seiko receptor will never, ever again receive a message. However, the watch and the system are an interesting historical footnote, and this watch is kind of a neat dual-time Retro LCD Quartz Digital Watch. The secret of the Parmigiani Hebdomadaire is pretty simple. You wouldn't know what it was by looking at the watch. You might think it's the beautiful champagne colored guilloche sunray pattern on the dial, but you'd be wrong. Or you might think it's the four levels on the dial main dial, inset, small second, sub dial, power reserve indicator, and and date window, which adds a high degree of visual interest and provides a balanced three-dimensional aesthetic to the watch. If so, well, you'd be incorrect. Maybe you think the secret is the story behind how Parmigiani watches came to be, how Michael Parmigiani got his start as a watchmaker restoring antique watches and then went on to manage the Sandoz family foundation watch collection and how they, the Sandoz Foundation, were so impressed with him that the family decided to back him to create his own line of watches, which he did almost 20 years ago. And finally, that Michael Parmigiani is recognized as one of the premier independent watchmakers. All this is true, and an interesting story in itself. 
but it's not the secret. If you think about the name of this watch, and understanding French also helps, you'll get a clue to the secret. In French, hebdomadaire means weekly. And there is the secret. The movement has an eight-day power reserve. This means that you only need to wind the watch once a week. The double barrels of the manual wind movement not only supply the eight days of power, but also provide it at a steady rate, so there are no torque issues, isochronism problems, that could impact the accuracy of the watch. By the way, it takes about 79 winds to fully wind the watch. Of course, the finishing on the movement is excellent, with circular graining, beveled edges, and a swan neck regulator. Lastly, the caliber PF110 beats at 21,600 beats per hour, was specifically designed for the tonal shape of this case. It's not an off-the-shelf, albeit in-house movement, that was simply slapped into this watch. Aside from the sapphire crystals, rubies, and Hermes strap, all of the components which compromise a Parmigiani watch are made in-house by Parmigiani or by one of its subsidiary companies. The Parmigiani Hebdomadaire exudes quality in every aspect. Dial, case, movement, and it's one of my favorite watches. Secret or no secret? In a previous Secrets video, I described the vintage 1975 Seiko Bullhead Chronograph that had a tiny SUA symbol just above the vertical day-date windows. You may recall, or already know, that back in the 1960s and 1970s, and into the early 1980s, Seiko had two divisions that produced watches, SUA Seikosha, now Seiko Epson Corporation, and Danai Seikosha, currently Seiko Instruments Incorporated. Seiko cleverly used the two divisions to create the best watches they could by having them compete with each other in technology and production. The sewer division produced the Bullhead and other 6138 models from the early 1970s until about 1980. Sua also produced the first Grand Seiko watches. However, this beautiful King Seiko example was made by the Danai division. For the time, it was the equal of the early Grand Seiko models, and many of the King Seikos were rated as chronometers, which had a higher level of accuracy compared to watches in Seiko's regular or midline. The secret, as you probably already guessed, is in plain sight, and it's the small Danai symbol located above 6 o'clock under the words High Beat. This King Seiko piece is from 1969, and as I already mentioned, was developed by the Danai division of Seiko to compete head-to-head -head with the 61GS of their in-house rivals at Sua. The 61GS, of course, is the lustworthy early Grand Seiko model. This King Seiko is a high beat, meaning that it purrs along at 36,000 beats per hour. Also, it's a manually wound watch, which, I guess if you're counting, would be secret number two. The King Seiko 4502-8000 movement, the 4502, two meaning it has a date complication, was one of the last of the hand-built movements for the King Seiko line, and was, in fact, the last 36,000 movements Danai would produce. Apparently, this reference is often seen with a cross-hatched linen dial in white. This dial variation in matte dove gray sunburst is absolutely pristine, and its rich texture appears almost soft to the touch. Sometimes a watch's secret is in plain sight, but it's not readily apparent what it is. I hope you enjoy learning about your watch secrets, and mine. I certainly do. Feel free to share what secrets your watches have in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.